welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Demon. This is the award-winning fan show. Thank you all for joining me. It is Wednesday, and with every Wednesday, of course, it's a fun-filled day here on The Fan Show because we talk a variety of things. Now, for uh, all summer long, we've had Wednesdays kind of dedicated to BattleBots because BattleBots is airing every Friday. And then we have the replay with the bonus content on every Wednesday, the following Wednesday. So tonight there is a replay of last week's regular season finale. Not the season finale, but the regular season because the new fight format is a fight card with a regular season, so to speak. Each bot got four fights and a few chances to make the postseason, which is in the form of a 16 seed single elimination tournament that will begin this Friday. So last Friday, what you're going to see tonight was the conclusion of that regular season. Who's in, who's out, and who fights who. And I got to tell you, the tournament shaped up to be a great one. It really did as far as the seeding. Now, I was down there this last episode. I was there for the taping of, of those fights. I was there for the taping of the first round of fights for the tournament. So there's a good chance that you could see me on the television on the Discovery Channel this Friday. But believe me when I say that you had 55 bots and it's a 16 seed tournament. So obviously, you know, it, like when you have the NFL 32 teams, right, and 12 make the postseason, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have the best of the best in the postseason, the best from the AFC being represented, the best from the NFC being represented. However, there are a few flaws with the way the postseason works. Seeding, I'm fine with. I'm not okay with the fact that a team with a better record can be the team that is an away team in the first round because they did not win their division. It's not their fault that their division is tougher or that their schedule was tougher than a team that won their division with a lesser record. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with the fact that it's not the top six, it's the four division winners and then two wildcard spots. Uh, sure, we've seen teams finish 8-8 eight and eight and go on to win the Super Bowl. So did they deserve to be in? You could make the argument, but what would it have looked like if they were not in? Uh, I mean... Any given Sunday is is the cliche for football, and very true one at that. But I think, in all honesty, when the divisions, there was only three of them per conference and five teams made up that division, that's a significant chunk of your schedule if you're playing each team in your division twice. That's uh, two, four, six, eight. All right? You're the fifth team. You play the other four twice. Eight games of your 16-game season plus a bye, or I guess I should say minus a bye, that's eight of the 15 games, or no, I take that back, it's 17 weeks, you have 16 games, so minus a bye. So still though, my point is, is that under that old setup, under the old uh, format or, or league uh, design What's the word I'm looking for? Under the old league configuration. There we go. That's the word. Under the old configuration, to be the best in your division really did mean something because you had to play the same four teams twice and those eight games accounted for half of your schedule, half of your record. So yeah, obviously, if you're the best in your division, you deserve to go on, but there's only four teams per division now. That's six games that count to your schedule. Out of 16, there's another 10 games out there. And you could have a week schedule. Now, you can't see into the future. No, you can't. So it's very hard, if not impossible, to say who has a tougher schedule or who doesn't until the season has played out and you look back and you'd be like, man, they had a tough schedule. 
But I, I just think that you can leave the conferences. You can still have divisions for scheduling purposes. Uh, I mean, there's no reason why you can't. There's no need to get rid of rivalries. You have perfectly good rivalries out there, uh, specifically in the NFC North, the AFC East, things like that. So there's no need to get rid of rivalries. I do think that the configuration of the divisions needs to be redone because obviously, you know, Kansas City is not a West team. Why are they in the AFC West? It makes no sense. Of course, St. Louis, they were an NFC West team. Now now they're LA. So that makes more sense. All of the NFC West teams are in fact on the West Coast. But there's some East, South, and North teams that you could argue, do they really belong in that category? Why are the Cowboys an East team? They're about as South as you can be on that map. It should be an NFC South team. You'd hate to lose the rivalry between the, the Giants and Redskins, but I think if you did the top six from each conference, still have the first round by for the top two, it would just make a lot more sense. I, I believe that you would be getting the best of the best at that point, and you wouldn't be getting teams that are getting in on a technicality, and that technicality is that they won their division. They did better than three other teams in the league. Congratulations. It's just, it's silly to me. So my point is, getting all the way back around six minutes later, sorry, is that I love how BattleBots has done it. It is a 16-bot tournament. So out of 55, the top 16 will fight in single elimination. They have been seeded based on their regular season performance and a criteria of a panel of judges. And when you move on, lose, you go home. There is no series with this. And I love that in sports. I love when there's not a series. You don't need a seven game series to determine the champion, let alone a, a team that advances to the next round. You just don't need it. You really, really don't. Three or five tops. Seven? Get the f- out of here. <laughs> I can't can't do it. So that 16, blah, 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 that 16 bot seed we're going to talk about in a minute here. We will have a special guest, Andrea Suarez of Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor is in the 16 seed tournament. They will be part of the first round of bot fights this Friday. Very exciting. And... She got married over the weekend, so congratulations, Andrea. She talks a little bit about that, especially the journey to get married, which, yeah, there was a a journey. I do not envy her and her now husband's, uh, (laughs) you know, road to holy matrimony but uh she talks about it uh the season so far because the the one thing that i wanted to find out about these teams that are now in the tournament is if they feel like the new fight card format the regular season was justified because uh they've done twice as many if not more episodes for this season alone than they have previous seasons you know on abc abc the tournament was the season. Now, I forget how they drew out that. I, I think it was more than 16 bots in the tournament. I think it was maybe 32. But you had a much shorter season. Bing, bang, boom, done. And bots, uh, there was no regular season at all. Like, the the whole season, the whole taping and everything was just the tournament. So if you lost, you went home. You did not get three more chances to make adjustments, prove yourself, so on and so forth. So uh, we talked a little bit about that, how she feels uh, under the new format, if she feels it was worth it, uh, did they deserve the seed that they got, did they deserve to get in, we go over all that good stuff. We've got the butt, (laughs) butt, buck, we've got the butt fumble award for week two. You nominated, you voted, we've got a winner, and a new name, new item, name or item, we'll see will be added to the list of fans show. One of my uh, favorite segments here that debuted last year, paying a homage to Chris Jericho, Y2J, and his list. Hopefully it's not any kind of uh, copyright, suable stuff. But uh, anyway, you get the point. So uh, Andrea will join me in a little bit. And yeah, we should probably do those, uh, those headline things, right? Let's do the headline.
And the headlines are that, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we pretty much went over all of them yesterday for the NFL because uh, Josh Gordon is now a New England Patriot. Josh Gordon and the Browns, for how they handled Josh Gordon, is a nominee for this week's Butt Fumble Award because the Browns, man, they just, they're going to brown. And and the definition, my definition of the Butt Fumble Award is when you can't get out of your own way. Like, you are your own worst enemy. Mark Sanchez, butt fumbles, runs into his own offensive lineman. That's one thing. Then he fumbled. That's another. And then it was picked up and taken to the end zone as a scoop and score for the other team. And that's another thing. So the three of those combined, it's like you're in control, but you there's just... One mistake after another after another, you can't get out of your own way. Now, a few Butt Fumble Award winners have been because of a single glorious moment that's happened, right? But uh, the majority of them are because it's like, stop. (laughs) You got to stop. You just get out of your own way. Another nominee was the Seahawks offense, or more specifically, their offensive line, or more, more specifically, specifically, their lack of an offensive line. I mean, Russell Wilson looked just not good in that Monday night showing. Uh, Normally, he can get himself out of those sticky situations, and he turns uh, what looks like a broken up play into a first down and then some, or even a friggin' touchdown. That's not the case anymore in Seattle. I believe those days are behind them. Uh, not to take anything away from Russell Wilson, but man, uh, like <laughs> your luck runs out at some point, and I believe his has. Now, of course, that's me, the Niners fan, talking, so take that how you will with a grain of salt or a shot of tequila, whatever your poison is. But the thing about Seattle and Russell Wilson is simply that uh, there, the magic is not there, and whatever you believe the magic is, it's not there anymore for Russell Wilson and the Seahawks because he, where there would be a 27-yard completion to Doug Baldwin, there was a sack or a strip sack fumble and then a return for a touchdown by the Bears. Now, they do have Khalil Mack, and they do look a lot better than they did a year ago. But Seattle, seasons past, nine times out of ten, Russell Wilson can make nothing can make something out of nothing a broken play you can turn it into a gain and save the drive and we're seeing the one out of ten. Ten out of ten <laughs> it's, it's just it's crazy it's it's absolutely crazy um so josh gordon and the handling uh the the browns handling that situation what a mess we're gonna cut you they said on saturday we're gonna cut you monday they said on saturday okay wait we're, we're gonna look at trade options why and then somebody traded for him and it's the patriots so the patriots got better i feel like we see this once a year from the patriots like they've never had a franchise wide receiver except if you want to consider edelman franchise wide receiver but they have never had a franchise deep threat like the Bengals have an aj green like the 49ers had with jerry rice like uh you know, the Saints had, well, okay, Saints had Jimmy Graham, and Gronkowski is their Jimmy Graham, right? But, uh, you know, the Vikings had Randy Moss, and then even the Patriots had Randy Moss. Um, God, wide receivers, they're different, aren't they? They're something special. But anyway, so they've never had a franchise guy at wide receiver. It's been very, very interesting. So they seem to always get that hot name at the receiver position for that one season, and then he's gone. Last year it was Brandon Cooks, right? And they even got rid of him. Now it's Josh Gordon. They had Randy Moss one time. So there's always a name out there that you're just like, oh, he'll probably end up on the uh, on the Patriots, and then he does. This year, that's Josh Gordon. And let's see, Carson Wentz, of course. He's going to start for the Eagles this week. Well, they're one and one. Uh, they could have gone another week with Foles, but I think they're just ready to turn that page, right? They're ready to start that new chapter. They're ready to get him back under center and back to being the dominant force. Because right now, it looks like the Rams are the, the team to beat in the NFC. Uh, what would have been, right, that tie between the Vikings and Packers? What, what would have been? What would we be talking about right now if either of those teams would have won? 
Instead, they tied. Still pissed about that. <laughs> Your AFC Players of the Week, though, Patrick Mahomes on the offense. Big surprise there. Defensive player, Darius Leonard, or Leonard. I believe it's pronounced Leonard, of the Indianapolis Colts. And Dane Cruikshank. It's the first time I've heard that name. Of the Tennessee Titans. In the NFC, quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. It, that shouldn't be a surprise given how he's played the last two weeks, specifically this last week, but it is a surprise because it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> so that's crazy. Uh, Danny Trevathan of the Chicago Bears. He's the defensive player of the week. I thought maybe it would have been Cleo Mack. And then Robbie Gould. Good as Gould. Kicker for the 49ers. We had a kicker on yesterday, Mike Giorgetti, if you missed any of that conversation, which it was a really good conversation. You should go and listen back to it. Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio. Those are the many ways that you can catch the replays of the fan show at your convenience. Subscribe and download. You don't have to listen live, but if you do, we are here under our new time just 30 minutes earlier. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tomorrow night, we got Cynthia Freeland. We're going to do fan versus fan show pick em. She's one of the best in the pick em game. I'm 0-1, looking to get back to 500, 1-1. And if I do that, if I get my first win for the fan show against somebody like Cynthia, oh, man, I might just tack up two for that. I got Aaron Coscarelli. That's right. Her and I face off in fantasy football week three. Oh, man. It's not an easy week for the fan show, folks. Not an easy week for Richard Teeman here. Gotta say that right now. Because it's like, if I win, I'm excited because I beat pros. But if I lose, I got beat by pros. I had my chance. I could have beat the pros. But no, Aaron and I have already started trash talking. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. We're both 0-2. How crazy is that? She's got direct lines of contact. She sees them at work, in the office every day. Guys like Adam Rank. And she's 0-2. There's a belt on the line, Aaron. You hear me? You got to shape up. One of us is going to get our first win of the season this week. Is it going to be me or is it going to be her? I'm going to post that question to the Fan Show's Twitter page, at Fan Show Official. Feel free to vote. Of course, you can still vote for the next couple of minutes for the Butt Fumble Award, but let's get to the list, all right? The headlines, like I said, there's not a whole lot. Uh, the tournament, though, for those of you wondering, the 16 seed tournament is... Oh, come on. Did it really disappear already? Fine, we're going to get back to it. BattleBots, tournament, come on. Where are you? There it is. Okay. So, in case you missed it, because it aired Friday, it will re-air tonight. The 16 seeds are as follows, and I will let you know their matchup. Number one, Tombstone. Big surprise there. Color me shocked. Number two, Bronco. Number three, Bite Force. Number four, Minotaur. Those are your top four. Deservedly so. All four of those, I believe all four were undefeated. Dominant performances. I mean, Bite Force, really, a, a Minotaur. No, Minotaur lost to Tombstone. They were not undefeated. But if your only loss is the Tombstone, it's probably still a win. Then, number five, six, seven, and eight, we have number five is Sawblaze, Jameson Go. Been very impressive during this regular season. Number six. Ice Wave, who just took apart. Literally. Huge. Number seven is Yeti. Number eight is Son of Waiachi. So right in the middle there. Just outside the top, but above the halfway point, right? Deservedly so as well. 9, 10, 11, and 12. Lockjaw, number nine, winner of the Desperado Tournament, but it was not a guarantee where his seeding would be, so we find out he's number nine, middle of the pack there. Number ten is Whiplash, one of the young guns, up-and-comers. Good spot for them. Number eleven, Rotator. Number twelve, Monsoon, international sensation, UK favorite. They've done very well for themselves. And then 13, 14, 15, and 16. 13 we have is Witch Doctor, Andrea Suarez. I talked to her tonight. 
Number 14, Huge! One of the fan favorites of 2018 coming out swinging. They've done very well for themselves this year. Great job, guys. Number 15 is Warhawk. About as local of a bot as I get up in, here in the Pacific Northwest. They are based out of Seattle. Good luck to them. And number 16, you know it, if you saw it. But if you didn't, it is Bombshell. Controversial win. Probably one of the most controversial moments of the season. A lot of people thought Duck should get that 16 seed, but we don't we don't make the decision. The judges do. Judges, there are three of them. Six bot battle royal. Looked like Duck. Walked, talked, and acted like a duck. And it was Bombshell. Of course, I posted Michael Jeffrey's reaction on the Facebook and the Fan Show's YouTube page. Go and check those out. I'm also active in Reddit now for you bot fans out there. So your matchups. This Friday, we get the first round. I'm not sure why this isn't the second episode of the three-episode tournament, but nonetheless. So this Friday, you will see Tombstone and Bombshell. I was there for that one. Son of Wyachi and Lockjaw. Sawblaze and Monsoon. I saw that one. And Minotaur and Witch Doctor. I saw that one as well. Then next week, uh, the 29th, Bronco and Warhawk, Yeti and Whiplash, Ice Wave and Rotator, Bite Force and Huge! I saw that one too. And then the third and final episode of the tournament, airing October 5th, will be the uh, semifinals and the finals. So you'll get two rounds of one side this Friday and two rounds of another side the following and then finally your last two rounds and a new champion who will win the giant nut we'll ask that a little bit later on oh all right so the list of the fan show there wasn't a whole lot of nominees not that there are nominees i mean this is my thing right the the list of fan show but i do believe that when it comes to the list of fan show that it can't be the butt fumble award winner and now now they very much could be the same there could be that moment that week of football that's just like they're both man like you won the award and you made the list like you need to just put your head down as chiseled adonis would say so this week i was looking around and there was a few people that maybe thought this individual should be nominated for the butt fumble award but at the same time their actions, I couldn't find what was butt fumble worthy about it. I, it just, in all honesty, it wasn't anything that cost the team the game. It wasn't anything that uh, reflected poorly on the team or the outcome of the game. I think I said that already. <laughs> it was just like, what are you doing? Like, not even like in a ha ha way, but like a really? Like, what are you doing? So. <laughs> Vontae Davis. You know what happens when you can't even go four quarters? When you've got to call it quits at halftime because that is what you did. You abandoned your team in their time of need. Now, this is week two of the regular season, so you can argue what you want. And you can make all the statements that you will about you're not able to, to go out there and be your best and you know it and whatever BS you want to sling. But, man, finish what you start. Doesn't have to be the season, but at least the game. <laughs> you quote unquote retired at halftime. You said, I'm done. Put on your regular street clothes and left everything in the locker room and took off. So, you know what happens, Vontae Davis, when you can't even finish the game in week two and you have to, you decide that you, the best course of action is to retire right there at halftime? You know what happens when you just up and abandon your team and it doesn't look like the glorious riding off into the sunset that you probably had hope, but more just yourself being a jackass. You know what happens, Vontae Davis? You just made the list! <laughs> That's right, Vontae Davis. Second edition, second item, second name on the list of fan show for 2018. Now, your butt fumble award winner. The nominees are... Brown's handling of Josh Gordon. Kickers. Just all kickers in general. And the Seahawks offensive line.
because of their poor play Monday night football, the fact that kickers can't make it through uprights to save their lives, and Browns just really like you you want him you don't want him you're gonna cut him you trade him oh, and we're, we're gonna trade him okay and your winner of the week two butt fumble award by a landslide is you just made <laughs> wrong button is Congratulations, kickers all over the league. There may have been a majority of you that actually went out and did your one job, but there was enough of you that failed to do so, putting them through the uprights on extra points or field goals in general, near and far. We've had too many ties this season, and it's because of you. So congratulations, kickers of the NFL. You earned it. (laughs) So that is going to do it for this first portion of the show. Don't forget, if you're gambling type, to check out my bookie. That's right, you need to visit my bookie and use promo code FAN, F-A-N, and they are going to match your initial deposit to dollar for dollar up to $1,000 with that promo code. And I hear great things. Kevin Goatee, who was on the show last week, who I announced last night that I did lose to in the f- first uh, edition of Fan vs. Fan Show. But I mentioned it to him, and he's like, I already use him. That's a great endorsement right there. The man loves to gamble. He uh, obviously probably has some experience on where to gamble because it's not just who you bet on that matters. It's where you bet and who you bet with. He bets with my bookie. Uh, There's not much better of an endorsement out there that you can get because I don't believe he has, like, a gambling problem. He's probably got it figured out. But Kevin Goatee, good friend of the fan show, Likes to make a wager, likes to do either the over, the under, the winners and losers, cover the spread, what have you. You can do all of that with my bookie, and that's where he does it. So when people ask, you know, about fantasy advice or whatever, I don't, I don't have fantasy advice for you. I don't give very good fantasy advice. But when they ask me where I gamble at, when I do, when I have the chance to lay down some green and maybe hopefully, you know, get some back and then a little more, help cover rent or some other bills, I use my bookie. So remember, you bet, you win, you get paid. My bookie, use promo code F-A-N, just like the fan show, F-A-N. That's my bookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I dot A-G, dot I-G, sorry, my bookie dot A-G. And they are going to match your initial deposit dollar for dollar. Up to 1,000, there is a limit, but don't wait on this. Don't sleep on this because... It's yours for the taking. If you feel confident in how you bet, then take that confidence to my bookie. And we will be right back with more of the Fan Show in my interview with Andrea right after this. You're listening to the Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show! Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am, but the 1% do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons, like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lenny, Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on Exciting. top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time, Captain of Witch Doctor, Andrea Suarez. And uh, first, Andrea, um, welcome to the show and congratulations on your recent uh, tying of the knot. Big news, so well done there. 
<laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And uh, yeah, we got married just yesterday. Now, it seemed like this was uh, sort of a surprise. Like, did you guys elope or was it just sort of kept more like, you know, be- amongst close friends and family kind of thing? Yeah, it was definitely a small ceremony. Uh, Mike and I have been together for just over 11 years. Wow. But we've also um, always worked at the same place, so we couldn't get married. So he recently got a new job, so it was a perfect opportunity to go ahead and finally do it. Wow. I, I Bravo to you. That's a, a true testament right there. If you can uh, keep it together for, for that long without anything sort of official, I guess, and then having the work uh, sort of be the, the one factor that, keeps everything uh, a certain way until an opportunity presents itself good for you guys though that's awesome I'm, I'm glad that you guys were able to find each other and and keep to it and obviously you know we see you guys uh, in battle bots and you make it you make it look easy but uh, i'm sure it has you know as does life all of its trials and tribulations but at least you guys look like you're having fun out there oh yeah it's definitely a blast and this season of battle bots for us was by far the hardest we've ever had you know, we went into our first match with a brand new robot and we're all excited and super optimistic. And our very first fight, we find out that there's a fundamental flaw with what we're doing and we had to redesign the whole thing. So definitely the most work we've put in the pits ever. Yeah, I think that for you guys, you know, uh, there's been bots that have done a lot of changes so much so that they end up renaming it. But you guys have always had sort of a uh, a knack for the flair and everything. I, th- I think your your costume and your your gimmick and get up and everything is one of the best in battle bots, uh, and as well as having an effective robot. But you see so many changes come and go. People that either adapt with the the changes. You see a lot of spinners now, or people that you know uh, think that. Their design is, is going to work. They just have to perfect it in some way, and they're rather stubborn about it. But you guys seem to kind of go with the times. What what changes did you end up having to make on the fly down there for Season 3? Well, we used new motors uh, this season because the big change was, as everybody knows, we don't have Shaman. So all of a sudden, that's 30 extra pounds we could put into Witch Doctor. And a drive upgrade was part of what we did with that weight, obviously in addition to all the extra armor we had. So we went with uh, Amflow motors or 48 volts. They've been used in the sport, so they weren't totally new. Um, but just in the application and the way we were using them, it was clear that very first fight that they were just not going to cut it. So we actually only had three people at the event because the event filmed over two weeks and we couldn't all get the time off. So we actually called one of our teammates that was still home and said, hey, you remember those motors that we used last year? We need you to go get them out of the robot and ship them to us overnight so we can put them in the robot tomorrow because we fight the next day. <laughs> oh, wow. And, of course, those motors didn't fit because they were about twice as long. They were heavier, so we had to have Tormach remachine the frame, and we were making CAD model changes. It was it was intense for sure. <laughs> yeah, I could only imagine now. I was down there for when they announced the tournament and the seating, and I was there to get uh, some reaction from some of you guys in, uh, in the room when they announced uh, who was in and, and at what seed. Now, of course, there was the final uh, Battle Royal with the six bots bombshell came out on top of that. So, you know, very fitting that the, what you would call regular season ended with a bit of controversy going into the tournament. And then of course the, the finals Um, for you guys though, knowing that you had a a legit, a legitimate chance of being in the the tournament, just pending what sort of seed you were going to be. The moment that you heard down there and then now watching it all play out on TV, like, can you recall what emotion you had, one, when you found out that you were in, and then when you found out that you were going to take on a bot uh, like Minotaur, and then now was there any sort of resurfacing emotion when you watched it play out on TV? Um, I mean, we haven't actually watched our fight against Minotaur again, so I can't talk to that just yet. Um, but we got seated at lucky number 13, which is very appropriate for our team. Um, I suspected we were going to be in the bottom half of the bracket just because our last two fights, our first two fights were against top tier robots. And then our last two fights were against what I assume were lower ranked robots. So I didn't think we had the strength of schedule to really uh, rank or seed rather in the top half. Um, and of course, Minotaur is as hard to draw as they come. But when you really look at any of the top 16, I mean, there is really no robot that you can say, oh, I, I really hope I get to fight this robot. That's going to be an easy match. You know, uh, in the top half of the bracket, you have Tombstone and Bite Force and Bronco. And, you know, none, none of those are freebies. So 
Uh, Minotaur is, you know, by now a legend in the sport, so it's just a great chance to to share the arena with them. Yeah, you guys at BattleBots are always kind of a uh, unique bunch as far as when it comes to uh, the competitive edge and just sort of that whole uh, portion of the show and and everything about it. Because you guys, you, you get excited for sort of different stuff than I think the rest of the world of sports <laughs> does. You know, I mean, obviously, you guys... You didn't find out you were going to be in the 16 until they had the, the judges panel go through. And I mean, it wasn't going to be all record. It wasn't going to be all strength of opponent win schedule. So you're, you're sitting there and you guys are kind of on the bubble. You know, you think that you're probably in, but, you know, are you? And if you are, where are you? And then, of course, you know that if it's seeding based on performance, you know that you guys aren't going to have an easy first round no matter what, because there's only 16 of you out of 55 you know, bots and, and to say that there's, you know, 55 good bots is one thing, but then of those good bots, there's the, the top 16. And so here you are against Minotaur for the first round. So it's like, you're excited to be in and then you find out, you know, who your opponent is and you know that there is no easy opponent on that bracket. So what was the uh, reaction for you guys when you found out that you were in and then who you were facing? Like, I, I assume more, excited but still like is it okay we've got to get back to work now let's hit it oh yeah absolutely and we were lucky in that we didn't have a lot of repairs after our fight with uh, ultimal destructo and then overhaul so we kind of had a little bit of a break if you could even say that compared to the work that we had to do after a fight against yeti and blacksmith um so we were feeling prepared we were as prepared as we could be um we were feeling pretty nervous about our number of spare parts we didn't have as many spare parts as other teams did um, you know, they, they joke that like the Desperado tournament and some of the, the rumbles that the teams that were able to do that were, they said, rolling deep, like a NASCAR team, you know, that was like the running joke because <laughs> some, some teams really have, did have two and three robots. They're fully assembled and ready to go. And that, that was not us. We had one extra set of frame components. We didn't have extra electronics or anything. So we were literally taking it out and repairing everything every time. So we knew the top 16 was going to be brutal. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you're right when you say that you look at this 16 and there's not really a bot that you could say either doesn't belong in there or that should be swapped out with another bot. I mean, especially the the top four. So you have Tombstone, and then you have Minotaur, you have Bite Force, and, and Bronco. I mean, all four of those guys did exceptionally well throughout the regular season, which, you know, that's something that I found very interesting. Uh, just a season ago, granted, you know, that was back in 2016, but you know, the difference between Season 2 and Season 3 is quite the jump. You guys had the new fight card format, the regular season, and so now we're finally here. We're at, you know, the light is there at the end of the tunnel and there's only three episodes left uh, before we crown a champion. Uh, has that been sort of uh, different for you guys, knowing that what used to be an entire season of the tournament is now uh, just a small portion of what this last season has been? Yeah, I think in a way the fight card format has turned into, you know, our goal is to show off what a robot can do, and luckily we have a few chances to do it because we would have been out the very first fight. So the fight card form format obviously really benefited us and let us come in and take the risk of a new robot. Um, part of the reason we decided to build a new robot and redesign it is because we knew we were going to go in with this fight card format. So I think it's definitely doing a lot to evolve the sport and just kind of let people try new things. And if it doesn't work out your first match, you're not out. You still have a chance to you know kind of tweak it and show that you still belong in the tournament. Yeah, a lot of guys that I talked to on here said that, you know, they were fans of the fight card format because it wasn't a possible one and done scenario. You guys, you know, you just mentioned that if it was under the old format, you guys would have been uh, one and done. You would have lost and you would have been eliminated. But this gave people a chance to, you know, rebuild, tweak and, and know that there was life after death so to speak, if they were, you know, on the wrong side of either their regular season record or after a, a few fights. But, you know, we have this 16 now, and it is, uh, in my opinion, following this all season long, watching the fight cards and seeing how everything played out, I believe it is the best of the best as far as for, you know, 16 available spots out of a total of 55 different bots. Uh, for you guys, having been uh, sort of the lower portion of the seating at, at number 13, you look back on your regular season, do you feel like 
you are a prime example of why this new format works as far as the four fights, the regular season, the criteria, and now obviously being put into the 16 seed tournament. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, our schedule started really strong against Yeti because we had done so well in the previous seasons. Um, but again, it was a whole new robot, so it wasn't really the same robot we were competing. And yeah, I mean, for us as builders, we learned so much more about our designs. You know, we had more matches in season three that we did in season one and two combined. So what we're going to build for season four, you know, is would have taken us years to get to that level of information in that many matches. So that alone is going to evolve the sport exponentially. Yeah, now one uh, bot that is the, the talk of the season, really, and they are in there and they are at the number 14 seed is huge and of course you know a lot of people will talk about momentum going into any type of a postseason for you guys it's a tournament uh huge got you know uh dismantled i think is probably the appropriate word by <laughs> by ice wave on that last episode but you know that's not uh, that's not the end of their journey they, they get in there now what what have been your thought on a bot like huge that has really caught the attention of the bot building world fans and and just really everybody but now seeing that they're clearly is sort of a flaw, if you will, with it. I guess if you pair it up against bots like Ice Wave. But, um, you know, you guys, you've been around the block a few times. You see a bot like this. What's your impression seeing these guys go into a tournament for the first time? Oh, I love the success that Huge is having. I think it's great that they've come in with such a different design and try to prove that, you know, it doesn't have to be 55 clones of Tombstone, <laughs> Tomb clones that they've been come to know and to to be competitive you know it doesn't have to be tombstone and bronco and bite force over and over and over again huge came and has dominated all their matches and obviously horizontal spinners we all suspect it would be a weak point for them and that, that proved to be true um but just like everybody else they're evolving their design on the go so it'll be interesting to see um now that they've seen that obvious weakness if they're gonna you know be able to do something about it and if they're even going to face another horizontal spinner yeah, I'm very excited to see how the tournament plays out. Like I said, uh, there's a lot of names in there that if, if they're a veteran bot, obviously it makes a lot of sense. Um, but if they're a new bot, it still makes a lot of sense because of uh, the type of regular season that they had, such as huge. Now, for you guys, obviously having a lot larger sample size from what was the regular season in the fight card format, whether it's your own fights or others, is there anything that you guys have looked back on and now had a chance to properly digest and be like, you know, this really works, but what if we tweaked it this way? Or what if we maybe changed this for next season? Because I feel like the this season, the format has worked as far as no one is one and done. But, you know, the argument's been is that you guys, it's not a, a matter of next man up because you have a roster of players on the bench that you can put in the game if somebody gets hurt. You guys are talking about parts, and they are expensive parts. So is there anything that you guys have discussed amongst your team or other builders as far as changes that you feel might be like a happy medium for all parties involved or have you even gotten to that point yet i mean we're definitely we have a million different ideas of changes that we're going to make to our own robot to be able to survive the fight card format a little bit better it's totally a different robot that you have to build to go through this format compared to what we did in season one where everything was single elimination and maybe you got a wild card and got to fight again so, you know, we're going to make sure that our motors are all as interchangeable as possible so that, you know, maybe we're down and we don't have any more motors and you take the motor from the lifter and you put it, you know, or rather a self-riding mechanism and you put it in the drive if you have to. So just from that perspective, we're, we're trying to do all we can to ensure success. And of course, sponsorship becomes more important than ever um, because it's, it's not that the most funded team will win. That's definitely not true, but it gets to the point where it does play a factor when it's electronics and batteries and things like that that you need for longevity of your design. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate your time as always. She is Andrea Suarez of Witch Doctor going into the finals, uh, well, the 16th seed tournament. As a married woman now, again, big congratulations to you and the husband. I know that you guys uh, are just like one of the cutest couples in all of BattleBots. So I'm so glad <laughs> you guys were able to, to get that done and, and now have uh, a new chapter of life, a new chapter of, of bot fighting. And we'll look forward to uh, talking to you again and seeing you hopefully for season four. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me on the show. You're welcome. You take care of yourself. You too. Bye.
All right, one more big thank you to Andrea Suarez of Witch Doctor, and that is going to do it for this Wednesday edition of the fan show. Once again, thank you to her for taking some time to talk BattleBots. It is a very exciting episode this Friday. No more regular season, no more fight card, no more, uh, you know, it's not over just yet. If you win, it's not over just yet. But if you lose, you will go home. You will be sent packing. So place your bets. Get ready. It is robot fighting time this Friday on the Discovery Channel at 8 5 80s from 5 Pacific, and uh, it's going to be a great first episode, great first round of bot fights, very exciting stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow us and like us on all the major social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and of course Snapchat, and we're even on Reddit now. Reddit, Snapchat, and Instagram are simply The Fan Show, and Facebook and Twitter are at Fan Show Official, your home base for all things football and nonsense is thefanshow.com and then you can always catch the episodes in their entirety if you missed any of the episode don't wait download subscribe and enjoy on spotify itunes iHeartRadio, and of course soundcloud so tomorrow thursday our preview episode for the week to come in the nfl and college football and really all things football alike might take one more peek at that BattleBot 16 seed tournament in the first round that will air Friday. Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube page and like us on Facebook for video content because we're getting uh, we're releasing more and more of that from my time down in LA for the BattleBots taping. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners! And remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show. <laughs>